<laughs> good, good morning and welcome to the CAD 1 Revit Topography and Surfaces. My name is Stan Henney. I'm the business development manager here but and contemporary artist here, staff contemporary artist. <laughs> <laughs> But more importantly, I have today with me Brian Juge, AIA, one of our instructors and a practicing architect. This ought to be a, a fun series, and there's sure a lot of you signed up, so there's apparently a lot of interest in the area of topography, uh, placement, placing of Revit models, site design, so forth and so on. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, let's see, we have our usual housekeeping slide first. And most of you have been on a go-to meeting, so most of you get this. But if you want to move your uh, the console out of the way, hit the orange and white arrow. Um, there's the raise your hand button. And could we ask those of us who are listening to raise your hand so we can make sure that... Yep, yeah, there we go. Uh, we got a couple uh, people. Got people hearing us, so that's good. Um, <laughs> It's always funny because if you can't hear us, you don't. You can't hear me say, if you're using the telephone, make sure your telephone button is clicked. And if you're using mic and speakers, do the mic and speakers button. But nonetheless, that's what you got to do. Now, uh, the next one is ask your questions. If you do have a question, please type it into the question box and we'll try and get to it. Uh, as close to in context as possible. The webinar we did the other day, there were so many flipping questions yeah, flying. And I'm still in. getting back to, those. what was that, Tuesday? That was yeah. a couple of days, or no, it was last week. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, we'll still be getting back to the past my, webinars. Yeah, my point is, later. don't don't feel insulted if we just can't get to all the questions, if there are a lot. So with that, let's keep uh, moving, and and this is, a, this is an interesting topic. Yeah, it always seems to be one that everybody has a, a lot of questions about, and uh, I'm always getting calls about this uh, on here. So for the sake of this, kind of the agenda we're doing, um, how to create a basic topo surface. So we'll look at getting into the very um, the very okay. part of what's going on in here. And Brian, hold on. We got uh, somebody saying they don't have any visual other than the go-to page. Are we? I think um, if you're... You know what? Um, we'll just cut to the chase. Uh, if you can see my screen, I'm going to put everybody's hands down. If you can see my screen, raise your hand. Yeah, so that seems to be an isolated instance. Everybody else can see the screen. So um, for those of you that aren't, and I think there's one or two people out there, I'm going to say it's on your end, not on my end. I apologize. Um, but we'll still kind of ramble on a little bit. Maybe you can get uh, patched in, hopefully, in a couple uh, seconds here. Um, yeah, but everybody else seems to be fine. So sorry if you can't see my screen. Uh, well, Stan's going to type in here and see if he can help you out uh, with that. Anyway, um, I'll just go through kind of the agenda as we're going through here. So it's going to be creating a basic topo surfaces. Um, we'll look at some of the side options that you can get into. So kind of an overview. Uh, this will be review if you've been on other webinars in the past. Um, but I just want to make sure that everybody's on the same page because I, I still get the basic questions. So for those of you that are, you know, going, hey, we already talked about this once in the, in the past. You're right, we did. Um, I'll go through linking in a project uh, or building specifically, how to do shared coordinates, and then finally leave off with site designer over, overview, which is a new thing out there that came out um, yeah, September, about a month ago. Yeah, about a um, month ago with the release, release 2 version. Yeah, so I want to go over some of the things with that and how to set that up and make sure you guys are on the same page. And, and just uh, so you know, we will be having more on Site Designer. We're kind of learning that. That's an Eagle Point prod, product that was purchased by Autodesk, and we will have something specific to Site Designer soon. So this will just be kind of a, an overview. Yeah, yeah, just an, just an overview, of, just to get you guys' feet wet, show you what, what to do, give you a couple of steps to get started in there. Uh, so if you're looking for that uh, specifically, that'll be towards the end of this, uh, but I'm going to try to skip to this, uh, get to this, stick to this schedule. Uh, before I get to, too far into this, though, blah, 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 stumbling over my words here, Stan, uh, I just want to get a poll of the audience. Um, how often do you guys create topography? So that's... Uh, launching that out there just to see what we got in there. Uh, let's see, everybody's voting in. I got 24%, 35%, 49%, 54%. Uh, looks like I'm going to close this off here. Got 70%, 3, 2, 1. I'm going to close this. 
and share the results here. So we actually have people doing this uh, more regularly than I thought, you know. Um, We're pretty evenly spaced. Yeah, but it, I, I was thinking it would be less than once a week, but yeah. you guys creating topography more than once a week. Um, with the 6%, I let the intern do it, which is, you know, always, oh, hopefully we can get around that. Well, one. and another one, you know, this brings up another webinar we may want to set up in the future, and that's uh, uh, the uh, InfraWorks for architects and designers, because uh, that's a good related topic here. Anyway, with that, um, just real quick, Paul, uh, you asked, can uh, we still purchase site designer if we're not on subscription? To the best of our knowledge, no, uh, at least site, not at this time. Site works is what it was called. Yeah, from is, Eagle Point. If you go to Eagle Point, it's actually off their web page now. It's, it's yeah. no longer there as far as I know unless something's changed. In the last week and a half, I haven't been on their page. And what and Autodesk did with it at this point, anyway, is they made it a subscription benefit. So you'd be on subscription, you you get the R2. If you're not on subscription with Site Designer, if you're not, you don't don't yeah. get it at this point. We'll see in the future, but that's the best I can um, give you. And it that. looks like some of their other things will be out there. So I have a poll up there, uh, just in case you guys haven't seen it. But um, let me take that down in three, two, one, and what we can see. Um, so, well, if I need to share it, uh, it takes some times, but I can manage. So, you know, the majority of you are, are uh, of, of those that voted in, um, can do this uh, in there. And again, that that six percent. That's again, that's why I have interns didn't vote at all. So that's good uh, out there. At least you guys are trying, um, trying a little bit out there. So, with that, I'm going to hide this and get into kind of the nitty-gritty and I'm gonna go over some basic things just some quick tips on what you want to do when you're going into this type of workflow okay so when we're getting in here and this is just you know a couple couple just a couple little points first you gotta have an island yeah first you gotta have an island that's right <laughs> and I'm actually gonna do that island I've got that as a project of mine that we're working on here so the first thing I want to do is create a site plan so you want to get that site plan whether it's an AutoCAD site plan or something else we want to be able to get that in there, uh, work on it, um, put it on a location that's always something good to do so that we have uh, longitude and latitude that we're going to be working with in here um, as we're uh, working on that project uh, in there. Then you start putting in the actual building locations, putting it in there. You want to put building pads, um, all the site design and stuff. We can talk about where that's going to be built, and I think more and more of the actual site work is going to be inside the site plan. So first and foremost, just to be on the same page with everybody, the preference is, is to build the building in one file and the site in another file. So if, if that's not coming through, that's how we're going to get it done. And no matter if we're using shared coordinates or not, you're going to want to get, get that in there and build um, that site plan, that topography in one file, the building in the other. Okay, and we can talk about um, how that's going to be um, translate between the different ones. Then we've got, uh, you know, naming the buildings, recording the building location, saving the location, and then we go in and then we actually import the site into the building itself and go that route. And we, we still are on the topo surfaces slide. Yeah, so. so I'll go back up the screen real quick, but that's just kind of the topo surfaces. There's my agenda, so hopefully you guys can see that flipping. So some people are saying it's not changing, but there it is. Um, so sh sharing the coordinates, uh, and then finally we'll get to the site designer and a little bit about what the site designer is all about. So setting up uh, phasing and talk about some other things that you might not be aware of that you need to have uh, when we're getting into that. So re real quick, Brian, <clears throat> just it seems like a couple, three people are having a little bit of screen trouble. If you hit on the console, if you open the console up and then you go down a few spaces from the orange and white arrow, you'll see a blue circle with a red, or I mean a blue square in it. Click on that a couple times. That seems to uh, kind of clear your screen and allow you to see what what is there. So down in here, uh, to go in there and, and right. click on that particular icon if you need to. So that's that's what Stan's talking Unfortunately, about. Unfortunately, we just don't have a lot of ways to help you fix things. <laughs> you can... And always call into tech support when you put Denny on uh, or, or Jennifer or something like that. So they love answering things like that. What's going on? Uh, they do. <laughs> All right. 
So um, getting right into it, the first thing we're going to go and do is link in that uh, file uh, or link in the CAD file into our project. So we're going to go in here and start off with just our plan. And I'm going to go in and insert uh, link in the CAD drawing. Okay, so I'm going to go in here, link in, and I can link or import, but I'm going to choose to link. Um, so I'm going to go in here, actually, under my presentations, webinars, so topo stuff, think of my site plan. Now, a couple of things to kind of review on here. Um, oh, I should point out a couple of little nice features that have happened. Brian, uh, let me let me ask here because right now Brian is in the actual Revit interface, and he's got a dialog box up. Uh, to start the the topo, there's a little topo uh, uh, thumbnail up in one corner. Hopefully, that's what everybody's seeing. If not, I'm not sure how to tell you how to fix it, other than clicking that blue circle with the square in it. So does everybody see Revit? If you can, if you can see Revit, raise your hand. We just one or two people to do that. People are raising their hands. So okay, good. The majority of everybody can see the page. So I, I I think we're good on our end. I apologize if you guys are having trouble out there. Uh, in webinar land, um, we will, you know, call us after the webinar. Maybe we can help you on the next one if you're just not getting it. Make sure you guys are set up right. These these are being recorded, right, Stan? Right. So for posterity, you can always go back and look at the recordings if you just didn't get to view it. I had, and again, we apologize on that uh, in there. All right. So a couple quick things to do in here, and I want to show a new feature that came out in R2. Uh, if you haven't noticed, right over here, my origin to origin is the default. You know, that, that's the default setting. Um, actually, it's, it'll remember any of these. What it does is now once you have R2, which is the latest mid-release update, it actually remembers the last setting you did. So the last thing I did was origin to origin. So it's going to do that by default, and I think that's, that's huge. Uh, that's, that's such a nice thing to have because we're no longer stuck with center to center as a default. There's so palpable excitement in the room here. Yeah, it's, it's building up. That, uh, for, so for someone who's teaching someone new, that's, that's huge. Anyway, I digress. Um, so I've got my site plan in here. I'm just going to keep the colors. Um, I'm not going to do current view only. I'm going to make sure I can see it in 3D because we want to have a 3D topography that we're bringing in here. The other thing I want to make sure I'm unchecking is correct lines that are slightly off axis. Anytime you're doing any landscape or civil design or anything like that, you want to you want to bring that in here. So I'm just going to show this one way. So I'm going to hit uh, open, uh, bring that into my site plan in here. Um, um, we'll have that AutoCAD file up here in my list shortly. So there it is. So here we have um, this island, and if I go to a 3D view, you can see, ah, there it is. And I have 3D topography lines, and that's very important. If these were all flat lines, you're not going to get a 3D surface. So uh, again, we're just going to go in here and create a 3D surface. So I'll go over the basics of that, but I'm assuming that everybody has a pretty good idea. So we'll go into the Massey site. I go into Topo Surface. And now I can create points, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to create it from instance, and I'm going to select the import instance. Uh, again, if you have a points file, a CSV file, or a TXT file, you can go in and use that. So give survey area information. Sometimes it's easier to get uh, from certain people, so you can use that instead. But instead, I'm going to use the select the import instance. Uh, I'm going to come in here and select my CAD drawing. And I'm going to say check none. I think it's taper, major, minor, and I think boundary. Hit OK. We'll see what we come up with. So I've caught a couple different things on here, and we can see it's created this, this points file uh, inside my drawing. Brian, before we get too far out, uh, Shannon asks, why did you place it on the first floor and not the site plan? Um, in this case, because I was going to do not current view, it kind of didn't matter too much which, which view I was going to be in. Uh, I'll see it in, in all the plans. So. Here I'm in the 3D view, and let me just finish that um, in here so I can hit finish. If I go back to the site plan, there's you can see the CAD drawing, which is the, the yellow line. That's the CAD drawing. Here's the dock out here. That's the CAD drawing, or in the first floor, or in the second floor. So it's actually in all the different views um, when we're putting that in there. Um, so I can use this in, in no matter what view I'm in. Again, if, if I wanted it just to be in one particular view, I need to make sure I'm in that view. But because this is a 3D CAD file, it's going to come in at the specific height. Now, this is an island um, near St. John's uh, that I'm actually working on a, a project on this, so that's why I'm, I'm bringing this in. And this is a Civil 3D file that was given to me. It was, it was saved as an AutoCAD file from Civil 3D. 
I had one of my, um, I, I had my other colleague here, Brian Haley, who's a civil engineer, help me develop, uh, get this, this information. He was using a program called Raster Design uh, with uh, some other information he got online to create this island for me that I needed. And Raster program. Design is available in, if you have a you, building design suite or anything like that, it's available in there. Great little tool. Yeah, it's a great little tool. This was a hand drawing that was brought in, and so we went in and he, went through his manipulation, I don't even know if he used the hand drawing stuff, but we started out with that to create some of the forms, and he did sight lines and profiles, all this other stuff that were that we can bring in and so we could use a, a bit of that to to bring in the civil file but it needs to be a an auto a CAD file it needs to uh, have that in there uh, it will not res respect certain things um, and escaping me different types of lines and stuff like that that you can't use you've got to go in and make the points so this was kind of a di couple different trials before we got the the file that would work for what we were putting and in. with that uh, Paul asks Paul asks, uh, most survey files have the initial points uh, dozens uh, to thousands of miles away. Uh, what sort of cleanup do we need to do um, that is, you know, a common survey CAD file? Ah, great question. So in, uh, and I need to cover this, um, so in Revit, when you're bringing in, and we're limited to a 20-mile radius. Actually, we're limited to about a two-mile radius. It'll still bring in things that are 20 miles. Now, what I had to do here was this file was was well over 20 miles from the origin uh, placed on it. It was it was way out here somewhere in the original Civil file based on the coordinate system that was set up within uh, Civil 3D that, that Haley was bringing in. So I manually moved it so that it was zero, zero, and I got it in here. Now, not ideal, but what we can do. We do have other things that we can get into to kind of coordinate this um, out there. And that was covered in another webinar. I will bring up that information. I didn't want to repeat the same thing we did a couple months ago. Uh, that there is some overlap from that. So we did a file, and you know what? I'm just going to bring it up anyway uh, while we're in here. But I just want to point this one out in here. So I'm going to go to the webinars really quick, and I just want to go to the archive webinars because there was a webinar in here that Brian and Haley and I did, and it was on, oh, what was the title of it? It was like AutoCAD and Civil 3D playing together, and that's mainly what we used um, for this uh, particular project. And it goes through all this stuff, and we have a couple different add-ons that we used for that, and it wasn't that long ago. It's about a month ago. Oh. So. Yeah, it was about a month ago that we were doing here. Combining, oh, what's it there? Combining AutoCAD and Revit together. So this particular webinar right here, we were playing with both of those in here. And I'll point out the tools in this right now that we are using. So we were going back and forth between Civil 3D, and one of the add-in features that we used was this shared uh, import shared coordinates between the XML file. Now it allowed us to coordinate these two things that were at different areas. So what it does is in Civil 3D, the civil engineer can re- position where, where the origin is, where zero, zero is going to be, uh, your Cartesian coordinates. And then he makes an XML file uh, that's all done on the civil side. So that he does that with civil and, and, and Revit. Then when I get the file as, as the architect or designer, whatever I happen to be, I'm going to bring in, I'm going to pick, I'm going to import that shared coordinates file, pick it, and then it relocates the origin point. And that'll, that helps us establish a better workflow. So this is you're going to find on the Exchange site. So if you go up to Exchange apps, you can go in, or um, actually no, it's not in there. It's buried, and we go over the webinar where this is located at. I didn't want to spend too much time on that, but this is this is one of the areas that we can go in and do, and it's very helpful. Please go back and, and review that stuff for playing with civil uh, 3D files in Revit. It's it's extremely useful. And yeah, it, it, it does bear that we should be talking a little bit about it in here. But again, I didn't want to spend the whole webinar doing on that when we've got other things to kind of review and do. So you have that in here. So again, the main point being is that you're limited to 20 miles, but really if you're outside of a mile or two, you're going to um, have problems. And that means from the origin point. So when we're in this file and we're looking at things like the origin point, the project base point, which is this symbol right here, it's the little uh, circle with the uh, X in it. That is the origin point, or the, what, the, what Revit is calling the project base point of the file. You cannot be further than two miles from where that, where that originates from. Okay? There's actually three 
base points inside a Revit. There's the project base point, there's the surveyor point, and I'll move this one out of the way so we can kind of see, whoops, uh, where that might be. Um, so I'm going to move that out of the way, which moves everything else. The surveyor point is this triangle with a plus in it. So that's the surveyor point, and that might be uh, the property line, a manhole cover, um, a stake, whatever it happens to be that the surveyor is, is generating the, the information from. And the last one is, is an invisible one called the Revit base point. It's inside the file. So you can see as I start moving this one around, I'm going to get different coordinate systems that are listed in here, the elevation, everything else. Uh, and again, with this one, I've got similar information that I can go in and change uh, within the, the, the project itself. Okay, so that's kind of a little bit of a re of review of the site stuff in here that we need to be uh, uh, playing with. Now, once we start establishing where the project is going to be, where the site's going to be, we're going to need to um, have these be placed in certain points. And I'm just going to uh, assume that th this is the correct point uh, in here right now. But if I need to set up some kind of elevation, if I'm working with the mountains, I might come in here and go in and change the elevation up. Uh, to make this. Maybe instead of the, this being an island, maybe this is a mountaintop. And where the lowest level the mountain is, is 9,000 feet. Uh, even though it says it might be zero feet on here, and I might go into my uh, massing insight and use some label contours, and we can see when I do the label contours, it's saying zero, but I can tell it that instead of zero, that is going to be um, 9,000 feet. So I can go in here and start looking at that as being 9,000 feet and kind of raise that up uh, in there for my project base. So when I start looking at different elevations, um, let's say in like the south view or something like that, uh, you can see this is at zero, uh, but I'll, I'll show that in here. That's because these particular levels are using the project base point, but once I start going in here and doing something like the surveyor base point, uh, we can start seeing that now level one is at 9,000 rather than zero. So we start looking at how we can develop this uh, into a, a different type of model. And again, that was just going in there, selecting the levels, and then within the levels, changing that to an elevation based on surveyor point instead of project base point. So I'll go back in and switch that right now back to project base point, uh, and then we have a, a zero. If you need both, what you can do is just select one of them, hit edit type, and I'm just going to hit duplicate, and I'm going to call this uh, one uh, this survey. Uh, no, fine. No, S is fine. We'll just do it like <laughs> that. So <laughs> my fingers aren't working today. So I have this one, which is based on the S, the surveyor point. That one, which is based off the project base point. So you can see this is at 89.90, where this one's set at zero. So it just depends on what you're looking at uh, within the project. Are you looking at the surveyor base point or the project base point um, with, within the, the file itself? Uh, all right, so we might come back to that in a second, uh, but I'm going to go switch back to my other view real quick, and I'm going to set this back to be zero again, so uh, because that actually is my elevation in here um, that's set up to zero. Um, so one of the things you need to ask your, your, your surveyor when you're getting those types of things from the civil engineer, whoever's providing you, where is the elevation based off of? Did they do it as true elevation or did they do it based off of a certain level? Again, zero might be 9,000 uh, feet up or whatever it happened to be. Uh, when I'm working with my civil, Haley, he usually gives me spot on based off of sea level. So I'll, a lot of times I don't have to go change this. What I have to do is go find the actual site plan because it's too high or too low uh, in the air bringing those types of things in. Okay. All right, so I have my topo surface, and we can see it's starting to cut off that mountain uh, in here. Um, so I'll go back to the site plan just to see what's going on. But here I have that site plan. If you are seeing those types of things in here uh, where it's cutting off the mountain, you're not seeing it, you're going to have to go in and change your view range. So you might have to come inside, go into the view range, and increase this up, uh, up or down, just to get that level so you can see what's going on in here. So if I come in and I make that, you know, 500, and I make this one 500, uh, hit apply, you can see I can see all the way to the top of the mountain, kind of seeing what's going on uh, within that model. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the site plan. All right, the next part is, is once we get our, our site in here, I'm going to do the next step, and that's going to be bringing in the building, uh, the buildings themselves and start placing them on the site and start putting them where they go. So I'm going to come inside and do insert, and I'm going to link the Revit file. Again, we can't do this there's no such thing as import, but we can do a link. So I'm going to do link, and I'm going to go find those particular little projects uh, in here. 
And so I would come inside and I'm going to grab this building, uh, this little laundry room right in here. And I'm just going to bring it in origin to origin right now. So I brought that building in um, inside the site and put it in there. Uh, and I can bring that in, and that looks huge for some reason. Oh, because I didn't scale up the I didn't scale up the CAD file. Uh, I forgot to do that on this one. Um, but let's pretend I did. I'll, I'll fast forward. I Martha Stewart this one. I've already changed this and put all this in here. But we would bring the buildings in. And then we would need to place them on the height that they would need to go. So, yeah, a really small <laughs> island in here. So it's going to be, you know, I was wondering why that wasn't high enough. So we'd go in and place the place it on. So it's a really tiny island. So we'll bring in one little hut in here. Um, you guys get the idea. You guys are smart. I know you guys can figure it out. <laughs> Better than you. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Apparently. So you place the, the building in there. You might have to rotate it around. Once you've got that building in there, we go into um, uh, getting in and actually setting that up. Actually, before we do that, we go in and do a location. So I'm going to go into the Manage tab and talk a little bit about the location where this is placed. So inside here, we got the location file, and we basically look for where this particular element is going to be. I've already kind of typed this in, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in here and get where that's at. And then here's this island uh, that we're at in here, and here's, here's the particular building. Actually, it's this one right in here. So we can start placing that. It's going to give us a longitude and latitude um, within the project. So you can see it's out here in the middle of the, and it looks like the middle of the ocean. Um, but we're really, you know. Now, Brian, you mentioned this is a project you're actually working on, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is this is one for some existing, existing buildings that needed to be ran and done and uh, different things on here. All right. So we, we place that in. I'm going to fast forward a little quick and... Change on over to do, 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 one there. The Farnsworth House meets a pizza hut. <laughs> yeah, kind of an interesting little project. We've got all these little <laughs> little huts with thatch roofs. I didn't I didn't mall. They didn't want the thatch roofs on after I started. Um, but we've got this little island in here, uh, and now it's at the proper scale. I got little boats and everything else uh, in here. Um, but all these little little buildings and stuff that are inside. So the next part would be going in here, once we've set the location, is now setting the actual where the building is. So we come into these buildings, and I'll go back to, this is the uh, laundry room we had before, and I'm going to go in and share the site. Okay, um, I'm going to establish where this particular building or link is on the site plan. So I'm going to come in here, and I go where it says not shared. I'm going to select this. There's actually a couple different places you can go for this. But I'm going to do the easiest one. I'm going to say not shared. And now I'm going to come in and record this position. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to record the selected thing. So I'm going to go over here to change, and I'm going to list this as a particular uh, location. You could change the internal one. Uh, I don't like to do this. I like to use this as a default. So I'm going to go in here and hit duplicate. I'm going to enter this, and I'm going to call it uh, uh, laundry ones, because maybe there's several different options I want to give somebody. So I'm going to have laundry one. I'm going to hit OK. Um, hit OK again. And then I'm going to um, publish this uh, out there so I can reconcile it. And now we can see this now changes to laundry one. OK. Now I'm going to. Real quick. Uh, yes. I think everybody could benefit from this. James asks, which file are you in now? Uh, you talked about uh, bringing the site file into the drawing file. I am not there yet. I am in the site plan. So what I've done is kind of inserted all these buildings in, but they're all links. So each one of these is a different link. Uh, in fact, this building here is actually linked in twice. Um, it's the same building plan for building two and five. So it's it actually exists twice in here. And so we have the different types uh, that we, we can look at. So each one of these buildings, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, all, all of them are linked inside of the site. So I have one site plan with multiple buildings in here. And I actually have one building that that's, has two copies or two instances of it um, inside. Anytime you're bringing in a building, you can name that building. So I, if I select the link, you can see the name of the link is in here. Um, and I've called it laundry. This one is the, it's still working on it, the kitchen and dining. 
Uh, this one happens to be building two, even though this is building two and five. Here's building, whoops, there's the site plan. Here's building three and four. Um, and here's building five. And here's the master building over here uh, for this particular one. So I came in and named all these uh, inside the project. Um, but the site plan is still the site plan. It's still the same site plan before, only the correct scale this time um, that's brought in here. But all these are imported or linked. I shouldn't say imported. These are all linked inside of the site plan file. So once we've linked them in, uh, the next thing, just kind of take a step back is we, we came inside and placed them all in elevation. So moved them all up to the different heights in here. But you can see as I move in, they all have their own floor level uh, level one in there, um, all at zero heights, even though really in this building, these are about 280 feet high in the air. So they, they have their relative positions based on um, the project, the, the building's height, level zero, which would be the ground floor, is actually uh, 280 feet in the air or whatever about that on this particular site plan. Uh, so taking a, a step forward, once we put those in there, then we go in and we share the site position. So I can go in here and place this, and I have laundry position one. Maybe I want to go in and record a different position. Maybe I want to have different options for this building. So I'm going to go in and do that again. I have this option here called laundry one, and now I'm going to go in here, select that again, the shared site, and I'm going to hit change. And this time I'm going to make another position. So I'm going to hit duplicate, and I'm going to call this laundry two. Okay, now that I've made a new position, I'll record that, but now I'm going to move it. And this becomes the big trick. You want to make the position first, and then you can move that building to a new location. Okay, and that becomes one of those where people kind of mess up. So let's just say this is the, the new position in here. And I'm going to go to the front real quick and uh, move that up a little bit more. So now I have that in there got it placed in my location. I have this as position two. But if I wanted to, I could say move to instance, and I can move it back to position one and hit OK, and now it moves back to position one, both in uh, X, Y, and Z, all, all three of those coordinates in there. So now I'm in position one. I can say move to position two, uh, and now that building's moved in position two. So that allows me to give multiple locations for that same building. Uh, maybe we're looking at different options, or I want to move move that particular thing uh, around to diff different areas. So I'll move it back to the original location. There's location one where that building resides on the site plan um, that we can go in and, and then look at what's, what would be put on here. Um, and so on. So, Brian, I got a couple yep. questions that popped fear, up fear here. Doing that. Uh, Michael asked, uh, can you change uh, level and grid line appearance of the linked building file? when in the site file? Um, yes and no. <laughs> so not directly. There's a couple ways we can do that. Um, uh, not the link, but what I can do is I could bind the link. It would then be a group, change that and manipulate that in there, and then make the group uh, a link again. And it's not the best workflow for doing something like that. What you really want to do is go back to the original one and change it in there. You can't directly um, change uh, things like that within the site plan. You have to do that within the building plan. Um, th there is a way around it, and we'll and we can look at that when we're when we need to modify specific things. So if there's something I need to manipulate within this model, I can go in and do that. Um, by binding that and then being and then changing something on the model and then making the model link again, um, that becomes a nice uh, workflow. But you want to watch what you're doing when you're when you're in there because that can lead you down a road uh, um, that can really harm the project in, in the lighter run. Um, but it but it does allow us to do some things. So well, Michael Michael makes a comment uh, here, and and uh, another Michael's got another question here. But Michael makes a comment. Uh, uh, my grid and level lines always look different in the site file than in the building file. So I guess that's where his concern He's trying to get them to look the same, maybe. Um, different how? They're at, they have different information as far as the their ones at zero and ones at 1,000 feet uh, for the same level? Uh, head are in different, the head is in different locations. Ah, so for those types of things, so if you're dealing with, 
I have, uh, I'll just go back to the site, uh, south elevation um, and zoom in a lot in here. Um, let's say you have the different site plans and stuff like that. One of the things that you can do is actually go in and turn off the grid information in the link and just leave the main file in here. So uh, I'll give an example of that right now. So if you're dealing with that visibility um, that's in here, you can go back into the graphics and then I can get into the link file, okay? Now I have the uh, ability to look at all these. So let's say we're, we're focusing again on this laundry room in here and I wanna get rid of the grid and I hope that that's the laundry room grid B right there I'm looking at. So I'm gonna come inside and I've got the laundry room and I can go in here and display settings. Now I can do it by host view, which is the site plan view. I can do it by the link view. So maybe the link itself has a, a different way of looking at it. We can go in and use that or I can go in and customize it. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna customize this and now because it's an annotative thing, I'm gonna go back in the annotative categories um, and I'm gonna to have to select custom in here, but now I'm just gonna go down to the grids themselves and turn that off and hit apply. Uh, and now you can see that grid B has disappeared um, within that particular file. But we can see the grids here still exist. Uh, and if I had grid, this grid here still exists. I'm not running through any of the other ones, but this one here is gone. It's turned off. I don't see the grids in that particular file. So now I can just rely on what grids were in the site plan rather than in the um, other plan in here. Um, if there's other ways of doing this, if you have specific grids, we can use filters to filter out some of that data. So maybe you're linking in someone else's grid plan. You can go in and use a filter to turn off their stuff or to turn off your stuff to really make this uh, easier on yourself. And that's where filters come in a, a little bit better place. So we can go in here and use the filters to turn off different things in here. Or if you don't have the filter set up, again, go in link views and start going in and customizing this uh, display settings in here. This becomes a really powerful area that we can do quite a bit in and probably should do a webinar on this at some point in the future <laughs> uh, because this is a very huge area that we can get into how this is going to play within our model um, in here. So we took a little bit of a side journey. We, um, we got a couple more. So I'm, I'm going to ask uh, Michael uh, G's question here because it's kind of in context and then we'll uh, folks there's a lot of questions coming in so we will try to get to them but just just hopefully be patient because we want to get through the whole webinar here. Uh, Michael uh, asks uh, how do you get these buildings to show actual sea level in the building files? So you know you, you oh. said they're about 282 feet above you know zero which would be <laughs> sea level. Um, yeah, what we could do is uh, go in there and select. There's, there's two ways of doing this. Um, what I usually do is I'll actually turn off these levels and I'll come inside my site plan um, and actually draw levels in here um, that correspond to those. So I might come in here and use, you know, pick line and pick a particular level and then name that the same thing. So this might be, you know, laundry you know, main floor or something. So I've got that in here and, yeah, the reading corresponding view. So I've got that in here, it's displaying the actual level and then I'll go in and turn this other level off, uh, which would be one of the ways that, that I typically would like to do this because then it allows me to actually use this level um, and what I might end up doing with this level uh, within my project. Now let's pin down. Aren't you moving? Oh, because I keep making more levels. Ah, there we go. Helps to pay attention. So I have this particular level in here. And now what I can go and do, uh, which is really useful, is I'll use the alignment line to control that. So if I go in here, now I've got the laundry main floor. I can move that up and down. And oops, I wasn't using the laundry line, apparently. So I grabbed the wrong building. You're using the dining room. Yeah, I'm using the dining room line. So there it is. Uh, in here, so uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, which one is it? There it is. So now I've got that in here. Um, I can use this to move it up and down. I forgot to to, to actually lock it, uh, which you don't have to do lock it. But now you can go in here and wherever I move this one down or up. Geez, there we go. Just not working for me today. I think you guys get the idea. Oh, there we go. Now now I can move that up and down to do that. Um, 
So we also got to pay attention to our shared site on how that's how that's working uh, within that particular model because now I am changing the position of laundry room the Z coordinate by moving this up and down. Uh, and then for the last part, I go in and I turn off the levels in here just like I did with the grid. So we just do um, do the same thing, turning off the levels in here, just display the levels that I need in, inside. Or we could go in there and go back to the original building plan and set up a view specifically to show in the site. Duplicate the view, switch out the uh, uh, levels so that they're using... Uh, site plan. So let's move along so I can show you and, how and that's done. For the, the <laughs> other three, four questions there, I think some of them are going, going yeah. to get answered here shortly, and if they don't, we'll hang on to your questions and try and get them at the end. All right. So, yeah, we're, we're kind of skipping ahead. So um, let me get, get into this because right now I have this site, and we can see here's the first floor. It's at level zero, but maybe I want to show this at 261 feet. So how do we get that done? So we've got the building in here. I've got the location. I've got kind of where it wants to be. Um, I've got some control on how I can change that within the file um, in here. Now I need to save this location back. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the um, Insert tab, and I'm going to go to Manage Links. Okay, now you can see in here um, I have particular files in here. There's two of them. You can see these little check marks in here. Okay. So inside here, this one, building two and five, and the laundry room are both checked off, but it's grayed out. It says position not saved, but they're checked off. It's letting me know that I can save those positions. Why can I save those positions? Well, because I set up a, a, sh a shared site plan in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to go and save those positions. I come inside here, and then I, now I can click the save position. I can't do that for these other ones because I haven't established any positions out here. So let me just show that really quick. If I go to the 3D view, um, like this particular building here, because it doesn't have a shared site plan, it will not be on that list. So this is building three and four. Not, it's not going to be on that list. So that's why it's not showing up on here as one being checked. Now, you cannot manually check this. This just happens when you do the shared site stuff. So I'm going to come back in the laundry room. I'm going to hit save position. And now it's going to save the new position back to link. So what's going to happen, it's actually going to open up the Revit laundry room file. It's going to open up the other project, the other building, save the position back into it, and close the file. And it does that in a matter of seconds. So it just depends on how big the file is. This could take a really uh, quick time or it could take a while depending on the size of the project. Um, so we can see that one's been saved. It's been checked off. Now I can go back to this one in here, um, and then I can say it, save position, do the same thing. Save that back to that position in here. Now I'm going to hit OK. The next part I'm going to do is I'm going to actually open up uh, that particular file. Uh, this time I'm going to open up uh, one, of these, one of these two files. I'll open up the laundry room, whichever one I find first. So I've got that in here, the laundry room file. I wonder if I can just squeeze in here. It's always also good when you look at this, you can actually see it save the date uh, on here and actually make a date change. So I'm going to grab this laundry room file. I hope that's the one I got. Um, now... When you're working in the same Revit file, if I, if I launch another version of Revit, I could open this and this process wouldn't happen. But you're going to get this warning because I have the uh, laundry room file in here and I'm going to open it again and it says, uh, this model is linked into one or more document. Opening the current session will unload the link. Proceed. I'm going to hit yes. This is not a big deal. The next thing says, you cannot undo this. Oh my gosh, what do I do? I just hit OK. It's, it's really not that big of a bother. We see it disappear. Um, now we've got constraints issue. Don't, don't, I'm not worried about that. I'm just going to hit OK. Uh, can I link? Oh, OK, because I'm uh, linking the file. So I'm going to go in and do the other one real quick. Uh, it's two and five. Let's do that one. Give me the same thing. Hit OK. This one will have me do the other one because we linked it in and I I locked it to the level. It it was giving me some issues. So. I'll, we won't worry with that. But now I have this particular building. Okay, So now we're up to the next part where we're going to import the site plan into the building. Okay, So I'm going to go into Insert, and I'm going to say, uh, oops, I should actually need to close that other file. So we'll go in here and close this, or it'll just cause me nothing but grief. Do you want to save changes to Little Thatch Island? Uh, yes. So we'll save that in there. And no, I don't need that guy. We'll 
get to him last. All right. So I'm in here. Now I'm going to go in and link the Revit file. And this time I'm going to get into my project. So get in here and I actually have this saved under my presentations, under my webinars, Topo Advance, Little Thatch Island. Um, but instead of doing origin to origin, now I'm going to say by shared coordinates. Okay. We've already saved it back in this file. Uh, in fact, I'll show you if I hit can oh, cancel, go into manage and manage links. I should, oops, not manage links. I apologize. Go into location and go into site. What we should see is there's actually building two and building five that have been saved back into this file. So these didn't exist before until I saved it from the site file. It opens up this file and saved it back in here. So now I have different positions. That's important to remember. So now I'm going to go to insert, go to link in that, um, that file again. So I go to my presentations, get in my webinars. Doo -doo -doo. There's that island. And now, again, we're going to do buy shared coordinates. Uh, and hit open. And it's going to link that file in. Okay. Now I might I might get this uh, option in here or this uh, particular message in here. I won't even call it a warning. A message just letting me know the font links didn't appear because they're set to an overlay. That's just saying that if you want it to appear, you need to go back in and and either reinsert them uh, or you need to go back to the original site plan and instead of putting them as overlays, uh, we can put them in as uh, inserts. I forget off the top of my head what it's called. I will look that up shortly. So it's just letting me know that there's other files in here. And this is a good thing to have, especially when you have multiple stuff. I don't need every single attachments. That's right. Thank you, Rick. We can bring them in as, as attachments. So I know you guys are out there rescuing me. Let's, okay. So we've got, uh, got those files in here. All right. We can see that it brought that in there. It actually put that on the site uh, plan because the internal, I think, was part of that. So originally that was zero, zero uh, in here. But now when I look at this particular file, it's, it's brought this in here. So maybe I want to look at the different positions. If I go back to the Manage uh, tab, I can go into Locations, and we can go into Site. And right now it's using the internal location. But I want to see the site we're building to is. So I go in here and say Make Current. Then when I hit OK, it's going to flip over. That's the, that's the current one for where Building 2 is. If I want to go in here and look for Building 5, I can go in here back to the site, say Building 5, say Make Current hit OK, and then it should jump around to get to this position here. So I can see how that site is going to be jumping around. I, I know this doesn't look like it's doing that too much, but hopefully you guys can see the difference. So location, let me drag this over a little bit. Brian, just, just to make things easier, I think instead of building five and building two, you ought to have Gilligan's Hut and the Gilligan's Professor's Hut. Gilligan's and Professor's Hut. hut. <laughs> Some coconuts out there. So make The current. Howl's Place. <laughs> hit OK. And we can see that that's building around. And what's really happening is it's, it's moving the island around for me. Again, the island is one element. Actually, there's the ocean and everything else and the ships and, there, and all that stuff in there. So we, we're moving that. It's not moving the building at all. It's just moving the um, rest of the stuff in here. Okay? Um, and that's one thing we don't want to do. Whenever you're, build, you're using this with the site plan and the building, you do not want to move the site. The site has a relationship on earth. You know, if your building is too low, you don't grab the site and move it up. You know, you, you, you can't do that. You, you got to move the building. But the problem comes in here. If I want to move the building in this file, I have to select all the elements and pray that I have everything and that I can move it. And that becomes very difficult. So we don't move the building in the building plan. We move the building on the site. And that's why we first put it in here. But now I have that site inside of my project. So let's go in here and let's say I've got a west elevation. And now we get to that other question. Well, hey, Brian, that's great. But I've got this information in here. And the first floor is at zero feet. But you told me this was like 200 feet in the air. Um, I'm not seeing that. So how do we get that done? It's really easy. We, uh, well, there's the, there's the one from the site plan, by the way. So this is the level from the site plan. But I want to display that as these levels in here. So what I can do is I can select one of these. And again, it's that, that same thing. We go to edit type. Um, instead of the elevation from project base point, we now can set this to be serve air point. Hit OK. And now we're going to get the serve air points in there. Look at that. See, isn't that amazing? So we've got that in here. Um, if we need to display both, uh, again, I'll set this back to my project base point. I'll go down in here. Um, 
Well, there's a little one. All right, survey. Got it in here. Make that a surveyor point. Hit OK. Now I've got just this floor one is a surveyor point. The rest are all based off a project base point. So I'm able to use that in, in my file and insert uh, the site information. And then when I go to the building department, what do you want to see? Do you want to see uh, the first floor based off the project point or project base point or off of the actual elevation off the earth? We have multiple options that play in here um, because, you know, Structural engineers isn't going to care about elevation, uh, but the civil guy might, the city, city officials might. So you have the ability of looking at that and displaying both parts of this. All right, I think we got a question coming in. Yeah, let, let me... Uh... <clears throat> All right, I need to take a little, little drink there, too. Yeah, it, it's, um, we, we've got a question from Cam. I'm going to kind of run through these because uh, we're getting close to the top of the hour. And, and But we've got a question from Cameron about what's the easiest way to man manipulate contours as the design develops. Adding points here and there seems uh, like a crude approach. Is there a way to change uh, the model with uh, new contour lines? And then Paul asks, uh, if you use bi-link view, uh, you can use a preset view with all annotations off. That looks like more of a comment. Yeah, I think that was going um, off of an earlier one that we had Yes, uh, in there. Shannon asks, uh, possibly a question for later, but uh, will Brian be discussing uh, modifying the existing site plan cut and fill? Uh, I know we talked about that in the previous webinar that we mentioned to some degree. Yeah. And, um. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I, I'm just reading through these so that you can kind of plan your strategy and, and catch a breath here. Okay. Um, um, with the process, and then Mike asks, uh, with the process you are showing with various linked files, how do you create construction documents? Are sheets created for all huts in uh, the site file, or do you create sheets in the individual hut files? I can see the levels would get confusing if it's all done in the site file. Um, hmm. Quite a few questions in there. I'll, I'll start with Cameron's. What's the easiest way to manipulate contours as the, as the de design develops? Well, the easiest way to develop it or move them is not necessarily in one or two other files. Okay, so I'm going to get to this file in here really quick and get to something that I said it was kind of a no-no to do when we're in the file, but maybe I want to go in and manipulate the topo around this particular building. Okay, here is a workflow that we can do, okay? Just bear in mind on what the impact is going to be, but I have this particular file. If I need to manipulate around this building, one of the things I can do while I'm in here is I can bind this in. And I'm going to attach all the levels and grids from that file. What binding is going to do is it's going to allow me to um, set that in here. Uh, now I've got that inside. Ooh, <laughs> I might not want to have done that, so I might have to go in and save that. Uh, in here, but this, what, what, what that'll allow me to do is it'll turn that into a group. Actually, I'll, I'll just show that really quick. Um, this is a junk file, so, so I can go in here and hit OK. Now I've got this file. Uh, I can select that topography, edit group, and now that I'm in the group, um, I can go in here and edit the surface, okay? So editing the surface allows me to see the points and I can start manipulating in here. Now, this is, this can be a bit tedious. Uh, this is where I really get into site manipulation it is an art, not a science. So when you're in here and you're doing some of these things, you really have to use those things like split region, um, uh, those, those simpler tools um, that, that we have to kind of manipulate that, that other stuff. Now this is chunking a little hot. There's a, there's a lot of information in here. So what I might do instead is I'm going to hit escape because uh, I'll do this with the, with the other model in a second. Oh, no, I'm just going to freeze my machine. Uh, but yeah, this becomes a science that we're going to get in, uh, that we, we get in there to kind of manipulate the model. I mean, an art instead of a science for manipulating the model um, that we're in here. Um, the other way that we can get this done uh, is actually going back to the site plan and manipulating in there. And that's where I want to talk a little bit more about the site designer tools. But it's now decided to bump me for a little bit. So let's see how much longer this thing's going to crank on me before it poops out. Um, but I will talk a little bit about the, the site designer uh, in here. 
and let me go in and just show us a little bit about what the site designer has. So we have the ability to go in here and set up phasing. That becomes very important when we're doing the, the site design. So what's existing, what's new, as we're, as we're putting that in, into the project uh, in there. We can also set up the base. Uh, then we set up the base topo surface and then draw a model lines for reference if you have different uh, site walls or anything like that in there. So we have feature lines we can do, uh, streets, retaining walls, sidewalks, parkings, curbing, uh, some, some uh, areas that we can get into to really start manipulating this. Now, from the best I can tell, they have not changed this. And, of course, this is still locked up on me. So now we're going to do everybody's favorite thing, and we're just going to kill it. Oh, I love this part, right? Don't you? Yeah, I do. Kill the program. It would work better if I just didn't touch so many darn buttons as we're, as we're running through this. All right. Um, so getting back to this, it, it is an art instead of a, a science, but we're going to have a better way of getting into this, and that's going to be with um, these site designer tools. So I have a, a really brief small site. This is another site I've been working on, and then some of the tools that we can go and manipulate and, and use uh, within the project. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is... If we're going to go in and, and start uh, looking at the tools, there's a couple things we're going to do. I'm going to start with the basics, um, not necessarily site designer yet. But you're going to start out with graded regions. Now, graded regions uses phasing, and so does the site designer uh, tools in here. So we want to look at our phasing. So before we even get to that, let's go take a look at the phasing in here. So we go to the Manage tab, and we go into Phases. In here, I've set up two phases, 1985 and 2014. So that might be my existing plan. You can put prehistoric because that's probably when the island first uh, existed was setting that up uh, in here. So once I have that done, I can see that this particular site plan it was the phase created was 1985. This newer site plan, its phase created was 2014. So we need to have um, that in there. Now this could also be existing and new, um, but I like setting it to time. It gives me a better idea of what's going on, especially when you have a project that's that changes uh, over, you know, that's ongoing within there. So you want to take a look at the phasing. All right. Now that we have the phasing uh, set up in here, we can go in here and do a graded region. Um, I'm going to do create a topo surface exactly like the existing one. So I can go in there and select that. And I'm going to now have two surfaces. Um, I have, uh, oh. should have two surfaces. Show complete. So show all. There's my old one. Uh, that's in there. So you can see the red one, that is the new one, uh, the face created where that's existing, 1985. Here's the new service in here, 2014. So that's what happens when we do the with phasing in there. Um, and then if I want to get rid of the existing, I can go inside and with my phasing, go and say show all, I can just say show complete, that's why the other one disappeared. Okay. Um, so that's a little bit of, of using the graded regions in here. Now, when we use the graded regions, uh, the other thing we should look at is that we're going to get the surface area in here, and then we're going to also start getting into other things like cut and fill surfaces. So as this gets uh, changed, the project area, the surface area is going to change between one and the other. Right now I'm not doing anything, but if I go in here, edit the surface, and I take some of these points and I move them in and out, uh, well, that's the existing one. It's probably a bad one to do. But let's go in and do the new one. So I can go in here, and let's say I need to do edit the surface. I can go in here. And maybe I need a, another flat area, so I'm going to come in here and just drag these back a little bit uh, and create a little bit more flatness for this. Uh, let's see, I've got a point in here at uh, 670, so place a point, absolute elevation at 670. And I can plate, plate that in here. Now we can notice that the surface area is changing. So now I'm going to get a difference between uh, this surface area, uh, 51... 34, and this one in here, uh, 5115. So the numbers are changing. I can go to the schedule, set that up, and, and get kind of a different um, takeoff between the cut and the fill that would be represented in this, in this particular area. Um, the other thing that helps us out when we're doing this is, again, uh, using those split regions. So then I split the surface and just deal with a particular area. Again, I'll refer to that, uh, that other webinar for doing that. Um, now what I want to get into is the site designer and really briefly get into what's going on here. So we need to set the base topo surface. So I come in here and I'm going to pick uh, my proposed surface. And I've got three different surfaces in here. I would go select one, hit pick, and then set that up. So I've got the proposed surface, which I think is this one over here, and I've got the surface. So I'm going to pick the surface, uh, pick it, 
Um, now I've got that set up in here, and I think I've got that set up. Then I go back in the Site Designer, and I can start using the soft terrain tools and start doing different feature lines and stuff in here. Okay, so with a particular area, let's say I'm going to go in and do um, a, a feature line, which might do a particular thing. Actually, I'll do a uh, curve wall, soft terrain. Okay. A uh, building pad that might be in here, or I want to do a uh, four foot wide uh, berm that slopes on one direction. So I can set that up uh, relative to the top of, uh, surface. So what elevation relative to the surface do you want to do it? Or do you want to do it at a constant elevation? We can set that up as a, as a chain. Uh, or we can use existing host lines. And I find that one to be kind of uh, a nice one to have in here. So one of the things that we can do is I can actually go into... Uh, my plan and actually draw model lines in here um, and use those within the project. So if we, we have a model line, we could draw that over here and then use that to manipulate the, the surface within our project um, inside. So I might, might do something like that. Now that's going to be way down below, but I can still use it because it appears right in the right location for it. So then I can go to the site designer, uh, use the feature line. Oops, not the feature line. That's the wrong one. Nothing was selected. Okay, site designer and use the soft terrain. Oh, not a soft terrain tro host. Okay. Now I guess I'll go back to this guy uh, in here. So I've got this one, site design. I can go to the soft terrain uh, in here, pick this one. Wow. Must not have set it up correctly. Go back in here. This is just the, oh, modifying soft terrain. There we go. Uh, that's the only part I get confused on. I'll end up using the modify instead of the locate. Um, so now I can use an existing host line. Pick the whole surface. Yes. Because one more segments are outside of mine. Let's set up to this one in here. Let me go back in. Does not like two surfaces, that's for sure. So I'll go back in and use this one. So the structural again, I'm going to use that rectangular right there. Now we'll go back in here, soft terrain, use existing lines, insert. And there it goes in and starts manipulating uh, the surface for this building pad with slopes at one to one slope. Elevation is two feet relative to the existing topo surface. So we're seeing that manipulation in here um, for that, that building pad to allow me to place it in here. Or I could have done a constant elevation to make that one flat element uh, within here. Uh, we can also do other things like walls or uh, walls, like a side wall in here. I just built a shape and it'll put that in there at that elevation that's constant, doing different berms uh, inside uh, that project, doing different roadways and stuff like this. And all these are, this is just a line, that these are just line areas that were drawn in here. So maybe I'll just do another one as we're moving along. So we can go in here and add a street. Um, I'll do that as a segment. Hit insert, make sure I'm on the top. Now I can just go in and add Placing that surface, so it's going to add a street surface in there, manipulates that. And then we have different uh, families that you can go and use this. So this is just the sample one, uh, but you can go in and load up others or go make up others that are maybe just a one-lane road um, and how that's going to be, the elevation off the existing surface, how it's going to manipulate the surface in here. So that's a little bit of how this is getting done. And again, I just wanted to give you kind of a brief overview. Um, for the best of my knowledge, these tools have not changed at all from SiteWorks. Uh, they are, again, a little finicky on how they're, how they're working, but um, we're definitely going to see some big major changes out there, and I will uh, do some more as these change. I'm really hoping that the next version of Revit is really going to soup these up a bit because they have been clunky in the past as far as manipulation. It still becomes this more of an art than a science, but I think there's going to be a lot of payback that we can use from these particular tools in there. So I highly recommend 
going in there, downloading the site designer and playing with that. I know we've covered quite a bit in this in this webinar in here and probably should have done a two hour webinar than a one hour webinar, but hopefully you guys are um, used to uh, uh, you know picking up more of this and we will be doing more of these in the future for sure. What I wanna, there's, there's quite a few questions. What we're gonna do is uh, Brian will answer the questions uh, offline uh, over the next few days. Um, I, I do want to let you know that we do have, uh, or we are in the process of creating a whole new webinar series for the upcoming year. It's called our Master Series, and we do have a gentleman who's going to, uh, who's been using Site Designer for some time now, and he's going to help, or he's going to do a, a presentation on that. Um, we, if you need to get your site designer, the site designer is available along with the Revit R2 uh, via the subscription portal only. As I said earlier, you just go to your subscription portal and it's there. If you need some help, you can contact our tech support here, tech.support at cad-1.com, and they can uh, point you in the right direction. But it's basically your Autodesk subscription portal. Uh, sorry it's not available to others. I will give out the... Autodesk plug that they will no longer be upgrading software and anyone who wants new stuff after February 1st will need to upgrade older software by January 31st and then stay on uh, the maintenance subscription. That's just not our rules, it's theirs and uh, that's how that's going to be. So with that, we're going to close the doors right now. Um, Hope you got something out of this. We do these for free, and we try and give you some valuable information. Sometimes we squeeze a lot in. So <laughs> I'm sure everybody hopefully got a few good points out of this, and we're happy to do them. We realize that your time is not free, nor is ours. So thank you for joining us, and we will talk to you on the next webinar. Thank you guys very much.